Hi everyone, welcome back. So in the previous video, we talked about using Git in general. And uh, if we go back and look at our, you know, the plan for the infrastructure here, we see that, you know, we have to have a Git server here. So this is what we're going to do today. We're going to set up a Git server. So this Git server will actually store all the demo applications that we will be working on. So manually doing that is pretty easy. All you have to do is create a VM and uh, install Git and add a Git user. I mean, that's optional, but you know, you just do it so that you can then use like, you know, Git at the name uh, to do Git clones. So here, instead of doing that manually, we're going to do that using Ansible. The first step would be to create the virtual machine using Vagrant. And um, so we're going to have everything in this DevOps from scratch repository itself. And I have a folder called infrastructure in it. And uh, inside that, another folder called apps and uh, then Git server. So we're going to have like, you know, when we create another Node.js application, for example, that will be under here. I don't know, maybe I will rearrange it later. But for now, we are in this Git server directory. And uh, I have created the Vagrant file here. If I open it, so here is the Vagrant file. It's a pretty simple one that we have talked about in the previous video. We are still using Debian, uh, Debian 10 and um, we have a set up uh, we have set a private network and uh, we are given the ip 13 and uh, the only thing that we are doing in the provisioning is we are just adding the ssh key so that you know we can log in as the vagrant user here as you can see i am just uh, adding the ssh key into the authorized keys for the vagrant user so i'm just gonna open powershell all right so in powershell i'm in this git server directory and uh, we have the vagrant file here so I will just do vagrant app and then dash dash provision. So that it creates the virtual machine and adds our SSH key. All right, so the Git server virtual machine is up now. All right, so let's try to log into that uh, Git server as vagrant user 13. Yep, yeah. okay. So this is a fresh server, nothing is installed. For example, Git is also not installed. So we're gonna do everything using Ansible. So under the infrastructure directory, I have another directory called uh, Ansible. So this is where we will be having all our playbook and uh, roles, everything. So if I open the hostess file, there's only one host group here, that is the Git server and the IP address of the Git server. And if you open the playbook, here you can see that um, I have added a single role called git server and the remote user is vagrant become yes because we want to run it as root and uh, this is only for the git server group. Now let's take a look at the role here. So in Ansible when we create a role we create it under the directory roles and then the name of the directory. Uh, this would be the name of the role as well and then under that if you have tasks in your role obviously you will have you create a directory called the tasks and uh, if you are dealing with any files in that role then you create another directory called files so you can see the directory structure here so let me cd into that so under tasks there is a single file called uh, main.yaml so let me show you what i have it in there so the first task would be to install the packages that would be git obviously we need git and then we need to install acl so this is actually needed because i'll explain that in a moment so the next thing that we need is we need to create another user called git so here we are using the user module remember here we are using the apt module to install the packages and then we need to manage which all users have access to this git server if you remember git uses ssh to authenticate users so here when we say when we give access to this git server that means we're gonna give ssh access to the git user in this vm so here i'm doing is i'm using the authorized key module in ansible so if you remember from our previous videos you can give access to a user by editing the authorized key file and then adding the public key of that user into that file. So if I want to give myself access to the git user in a system, all I have to do is edit the dot ssh key. So here we are using this with file, which is kind of like a 
way to iterate over multiple items in a list so here i can add another uh, key called um, you know another user if i if i want to give access to another user or another application i can just add another entry here and add the keys there so here you can see that it says with file this expects a file in this location that is under the files there is a directory called ssh keys and then here we have the public key here so if i want to give access to another user all i have to do is add another file in the same directory and then just add uh, another entry called uh, you know another or something like that so that way this key will have access to the git user and the next thing that we need to do is we need to create repositories in a git server you create a repository using the command git in it dash dash bear and then the location of the repository so if you want to create under slash home slash git repos this is the command git in it dash dash bear so this will create an empty repository in this location here also we're going to use ansible to do that so what we are doing is where you we are using the command module to execute a command and the command is git init dash dash bear then the location that is slash home git repos and then item so here what i'm planning is here we have another loop here this has a list of all the repositories so this means i have two repositories here repo one and repo two and here when i use the item we will be able to iterate over each of these things so this essentially means that ansible ansible will run two commands one that would be git init bear with the first item here and the second one with the second item obviously we don't want to have ansible run this command every time we run ansible right so for that we do create slash home git repos you know the repo name then dot git and then head so this means when you create a new repository in git it will have a file called head under the dot git directory so here what we are telling ansible is this command will create this file so if this is already present don't run this command so this essentially gives us a way to create repositories without ansible running multiple times causing any issues let's go ahead and run this okay so i'm in the ansible directory now so ansible playbook dash i hostess then the playbook file all right so it's doing the first task which is to install packages so you can see it actually installed the packages then it created the git user and then it added the ssh key and it actually created two repositories so let's go back to the git server let me switch to the user git all right so the user is created and uh, yeah it created the repos uh, repos directory and we have repos1 and repos2 here awesome so what happens if i run ansible again let's run it again ansible is item potent so that means it will not make any changes unless it's required and you can run it as many times as you want and it won't cause any issues remember the command module is not item potent so you have to make sure that whatever you do with the command module the operation is item potent meaning you should be able to run it as many times as you want without causing any issues so here you can see that uh, changed is zero so it did not even try to recreate the repositories so if i remove the you know the directory itself and uh, run ansible so you can see that it created the you know repositories and uh, if we take a look at the dot ssh directory you can see that the ssh key is also added here so this is my ssh key this one all right so let's go ahead and try our git server so let's try to clone the first uh, you know repo one so git clone git at the ip address of the server that would be 192.168.33 and 13 and then the location of the repository in our case it was under the home directory of the git user repos and then repo one all right so you can see that it says you have cloned an empty repository
and here you can see that you know our remote is present so let's just commit that all right so we just pushed it to our own repository and uh, we should be able to do any git command or anything like that just as if it was like another you know github repository all right so we have a last uh, task that would be to uh, use a dns entry so using like you now git at uh, this ip address does not seem so pretty it makes sense to have a dns entry point to this so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to use my own domain and um, uh, which is managed by cloudflare so i'm just going to add a new entry that would be for so git.devops.esc.sh and that should point to uh, 192.168.33.13 and it should not be proxied because this is a local uh, IP address. Now at least some of you might be thinking like you know, how would it work this is actually pointing to a local address right well that's fine I mean it's just that it will only work from my machine so if I do dig devops.esc.sh you can see that it is resolving to this address so this is going to resolve to this address anywhere in the world it's just that this thing is only accessible from my local machine so you know it's useless but here i'm using it only to make things you know look better so if i do git clone git at repos repo2 yeah here you know it just cloned the second repository so i will keep all the ansible you know yaml files and everything in this devops from scratch repository here i'll link the repository in the description you can check it out that's it for this video in the next one we will be talking about how to deal with an actual node.js application you know launch everything from scratch using ansible and vagrant so see you in the next one